as well. John Wood is the director of a new piece being put on by Stay a Stooged Theatre. Have I got that right, John? I just want to make sure. Yes. Stooged. Why on earth would you call yourself Stooged? Well, that's a question. For, I think Jib can answer that one. Yeah, uh, it's a question for Carl Young, the uh, artistic director of Stooged. Um, he created the company when he was in high school with a few friends, uh, and at the beginning of the company it was meant to be a little bit of fun, so uh, they kind of named it after the Three Stooges. Uh -huh. uh, and then it has kind of evolved into a whole lot more over the last ten years. Uh, now, what was the last thing you guys put on? It was... uh, the Pillow Man. I saw the Pillow Man. Conda it was winning. very clever. Yeah, Is excellent. the love song very clever, John Wood? I like the thing so. Uh, <laughs> no, it's a... a a bit different from Stooge normally. Um, usually we're known for a bit of um, out there scripts. This one's more centred as a romantic comedy. It's a, a little bit normal in that sense, <sighs> but it definitely has a bit of difference. Oh, that's a good sign. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I need normal. <laughs> no. I've had superannuation rip-offs this morning. I've had young people leaving home. I can't go, but I'd like a little bit of L-O-V-E. Well, yeah, that's what we, we can have that here well, this morning? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. The, late, the, the play is called Love Song. Four of the uh, actors, five in fact are here, four actors and the director, Theo Rule playing Bean, Amy V playing Joan, the well-meaning sister, Matt Graham playing Harry, the brother-in-law, Jiminy Lewis, the new love, Burglar. Hmm, what a lineup! We're going to have a little taste uh, from the play. Set the scene for us, please, John Wood. This is the early scene of the play. Bean's a bit of a recluse. No one really knows him that well. And Harry and Joan have him over one night. And Harry decides that maybe we should do a bit of a quiz. Maybe we can find out what exactly is wrong with him. Ooh. So this is the quiz that he gets. Oh, let's hear it live here on 1233 ABC Newcastle, a new play by Stooge Theatre called Love Song. Excellent. Now, what do we got? Uh, uh, here we are. Question one. You ready, Bane? Okay. Terrific. We begin. A scenario. It's your birthday. You are presented... Happy. Excuse me? Happy. What's that mean? What's happy mean? I haven't read the question. You have to let him read the whole question, Bean. Was that your answer? Happy. But you have to let him finish first. <laughs> you, you have to find out what I'm actually asking. He understands. First I ask you the question, and then you answer based on what I'm actually asking you. That seems fair. Right? It's a test. I see. You do? Excellent. We proceed. Question one. A scenario. It's your birthday. You are presented by your most beloved with a gift-wrapped box. Which of the following items do you wish is inside? A rainbow. Joe, it's multiple choice. It's multiple choice. He must have taken tests. Bean, you have to let him read the whole question, even if it's pointless and fraudulent. Thank you. Joe, that's helpful. Sure. First, you hear the choices, Bean, and then from those you choose what you want to be in the box. Interesting. Right? Yes, it is. Now, here we go. You wait for the choices. Now, item one, a puppy. That seems fine. Bean, Christ, it's multiple choice. You hear four choices. Harry, if you yell at him, I'll come over there and I'll slap you. But he won't. If you yell at him again, if you raise your voice, I'm not kidding. Sorry. Okay. He won't let me read all four options. Let him finish the question, please, and if he yells at you, I'll hit him with my fist. Okay. Go ahead, Harry. Terrific. So, item one is a puppy. Item two, a songbird. Item three, a bunny. And item four is a baby. A human baby? This is the question. They put a baby in a wrapped box? Apparently. Who would do that? Your most beloved, it says. I... I guess that'd be friends and family. Is it alive? What kind of question is that? I think we can assume it's alive, Bean. It can breathe. Yes! How? You know, it's, I don't know. Uh, let's just assume, okay, that all the gifts are alive just to keep this from getting creepy. Everyone's fine. Bean, the box has holes in the top. It's ventilated. How long has it been in there? The baby? Uh, an hour? Uh, no, not even, not even. A minute. We, we just wrapped him up just this second. I just now put the lid on. Is there food? Yes, there is food and a blanket and if it's a bunny then there's a little patch of grass. They like it in their bean. They are comfortable. They're comfortable in the box? Yes, they are. Are. are you sure? Yes, because if we are ever going to get to question two out of, like, 200 questions, if we are ever going to move on, you have to answer the question. You have to choose, Bean, Puppy, Bird, Bunny, Baby, all right? Which one do you want? Oh, I'm, I'm 
I'm going to say the bird. The bird! Well, there you go. That's item two. Excellent. See? Is that so hard? Terrific. Now, that way, if it's dead, at least we didn't kill the baby. Bean? <coughs> birds die all the time. Bean? Well, they find a window. The bird's not dead. It's in a wrapped box. There are holes in the top. The question didn't say it's that. It's implied. How is it implied? I think by killing the bird, you save the life of the other three. No, no. In fact, that's not what you do. What you do is you skew the test. You answer the question based on a morose assumption, so now, instead of saying what you like, you've stated what you most want dead, which is the opposite of the question. So when the results are in, you will have the opposite personality to the one you actually have. Harry, what did I tell He's you? He's giving opposite answers. What did I say about the yellow? You can't just choose what you want to die, Joe. It skews the entire test. I have an appointment. Is it too much for him to answer the question? Apparently. Well, can't we just try it where he doesn't base his answers on creepy assumptions about babies dying? I just remembered I have an appointment. What the hell? Harry... He left. Harry Bourbon. A scene from <laughs> Love Songs, a wacky scene. <laughs> Tell me, John Wood, and beautifully performed for us this morning by Theo Rule, uh, Amy V, uh, Matt Graham, and uh, Amy V, who we normally speak to here in uh, on 1233 ABC Newcastle, in her other guise as a musician. Do you like performing like this, Amy V? I do. I enjoy it very much. I particularly find this role quite challenging because Joan is pretty much the opposite of me. <laughs> ah. She's um, yeah, she's very uptight she is very controlling of people and um i don't know i'm, I'm pretty laid back normally so uh no it's great I'm, I'm really enjoying it this is the first straight play i've done um since i was at uni I, i've done a lot of musical theater in newcastle but um but yeah this is a really great challenge for me and i get to work with these amazing actors as well which is a bonus matt graham you were reading the part of harry the brother-in-law there what do you do you uh, do a performance as a your full-time life or is this something you squeeze into the other part of life no 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 i'm actually uh, i've uh, forsaken all employment for uh for, the, for this uh <laughs> this pursuit of this in, insane career but uh i am like amy i, I started out uh, oh well i suppose i was a musician for a long time as well uh, and sort of gave that up uh, recently, not permanently, but just to sort of focus on this kind of thing. Uh, and it's going really well. I'm really enjoying it. Fantastic. What about you, Theo? Um, well, I, I last year I was um, performing on a full-time basis, um, but it's been a while since I've uh, done anything with Stooge Theatre or uh, on the stage at Newcastle, so it's a, it's a thrill to be able to return with them and to do uh, a script which is so sort of meaty and enjoyable but also so sort of poetic yeah. and romantic as well. Well, that little piece we heard there is nice and bitey. Uh, Jiminy Lewis, you're the new love burglar uh, who precipitates the uh, dilemma that uh, uh, sparks the conversation or the quiz that we've just heard. Is, is acting your full-time passion as well? It's not. Um, I live and work in Sydney. Um, I'm a sexologist, so I work in the field of HIV and sexual health uh, during the week, so uh, a bit of theatre would really help you cut loose at night. I'm, at a night, little I bit imagine. of an outlet. Um, so yeah, I mean, this is a really lovely, light-hearted play to kind of um, uh, act our blues away, I guess. Um, and like Amy said, it, it's a wonderful cast. Um, John Wood is a, a great new director, um, and Stooge are really building a wonderful reputation in Newcastle theatre. So I'm really excited to be a part of it. Pillow Man was the last performance, I think. I saw That's that right. last year and I was blown away. It was really clever. Mm, wonderful script, as is this one, I think. Um, Carl has a real panache with uh, choosing really, uh, really interesting scripts, so hopefully we can do it justice. John Ward, is there something in the water in Newcastle and the Hunter that means that there is just an abundance of live theatre and uh, musical theatre? Well, ever since I was in uni, I've just noticed so much like theatre around. Because I'm not actually from Newcastle. I mean, like, I'm from Roman Terrace, and so I never really came out here to see theatre. And now I'm here. Well, don't laugh at Roman Terrace. <laughs> <laughs> oh. No, it's more this notion I'm not really from here. Well, since well, I came out, I thought you were going to say from London. No, no, yeah. no. no, no, no. <laughs> well, I mean, Would you got my horse and car? <laughs> <laughs> no, I played it from Roman Terrace. No, um, Did you, no. you got a passport, obviously. Yeah, of course. No. No, it's just that I never really came to Newcastle. And then as soon as I noticed, like, there was Tantrum and there was YPT and there was all these companies all doing great work. And as soon as you see one play, it becomes like this domino effect and you just see all this talent. And I've just been, you know, here for like three years, just living in the Civic, and it's been great. I love it. 
You should have got out of Raymond ter Terrace earlier. Yeah. <laughs> yes, well, I think everyone should get out of Raymond Terrace. <laughs> no, 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 my parents no, no, no. who are still out there, I apologise for this. <laughs> okay. John doesn't have a car, so it's very hard for him. To 40, 40 minutes is, you know, is, is a very no. big distance for him. So. But, uh, but actually, you know, without being disparaging, which is not the intent, I'm sure, at all. <laughs> Sorry, we can't, can't see you in the look there. He's throwing Theo at this point. But it does, half the audience. It does <laughs> speak to the fact that yes. there's not a lot going on for young people in Raymond Terrace, which not we have spoken about here on this program no, definitely. many a time and i'm happy to come in for a conversation like that because i totally agree on that but i mean like coming at the newcastle and just seeing how much there is here in terms of theater i just it's just amazing so where'd you get you where'd you learn your directing skills um i went to uni i did a ba at uni and uh yeah just did a couple of courses there and i seemed to impress some people and because my first play was there and carl young the artistic director actually saw it and i didn't know who he was at the time and yeah, he just we met up after a show that I saw of Stooge, then we had lunch, and one thing led to another. Did a show with them last year as AD, and then yeah, I got this show. So it really just came about just by doing and fantastic. Seeing. Is this is this where you want to stay? Do you want to dig into this uh, productive uh, creative space? Yeah, I think yeah, definitely creative space. If not theatre, definitely film uh, as well. I want to try to look at both kind of areas and. Yeah, just at the moment I've kind of made a little niche for myself in Newcastle Theatre and I have no rush to get out of it just yet. Uh. <laughs> I do love it. Well, there is plenty going on. So for somebody like you, Matt, who's decided that you want to, that you are letting go of other stuff in your life and, and staying there, I mean, that's quite a, a risky thing to do. It is, but uh, look, I... It just honestly got to a point where I was 26 and I had uh, done university. I had I had uh, had the retail career. I had the desk job and all that kind of thing. And I just had absolutely no real direction. And I started uh, my first production just on a whim. And I was like, "That's it. Like I would rather be 40 and happy with what I'm doing and <laughs> poor than 40 and." depressed because I am stuck in a job that I hate, you know what I mean? So mm. it, it is a big risk, it is a big risk, but I am willing to take it. Well, they say, yeah. don't they, those clever people say, follow your passion mm. and the jobs will come, we hope. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> You've chosen sexology as your job, Jivani. That's right. I'm uh, also doing a diploma of counselling at the moment, so working and studying and acting and travelling to and from Sydney, so it's, it's a chock-a-block life. Fantastic. Mm. And I know that there's a shortage of sexologists in the world. Absolutely. Uh, just represent. <laughs> <laughs> just, um, I think there's only one in uh, Newcastle. There is. Telling me recently. Well, in about a year's time, there'll be two. So <laughs> get excited, Newcastle. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we we'll save up those problems. Or maybe don't save up those. <laughs> uh, get to <laughs> it straight away. <laughs> <laughs> those problems are sorted out. We've talked about financial problems earlier this morning. We know the other side of the mixed up equation is the same problems but that's not what we are here to address love songs a love song it's called um uh, and my guest this morning theo rule amy v matt graham jimmy lewis and john wood john um in the in the mix of plays that you know people have the chance to go and see and there is live local theater there is musical theater that's on who do, do you reckon this speaks to this play I actually, I'm not trying to be that kind of person that's trying to sell to everyone, but I, I think everyone in some way or form can relate. There's two different love stories in this play, and you will, you will adapt to one of them, I reckon. You will, you'll see them, and I think you will actually care for them, I think. And I, I, I honestly think this is an ageless play. Everyone kind of is here for it. What do you like about it, Amy V? Um, it's a very, very clever script. Um, and I think, as John said, I think it really speaks to a lot of different people. I think you can see a little bit of yourself in either one of these stories. So, um, yeah, I think it's just, it's a really great script and I'm just glad to be a part of it. The play is uh, on at the Civic between the 6th and the 9th of March. It's just this week. It's on at the Playhouse. Five performances only. There's one on each evening and your matinee on Saturday afternoon. Good luck with it, guys. Thank, Thank you. you Thanks for coming in and reading for us uh, this morning here on 12.33 ABC Newcastle. Love songs. It gives me an excuse to play a song that I've been totally indulged.